Well, Alexander, how are you doing today? Hey, Karim. <laughs> how are you? Nice to see you, Karim. Thank hey, you so everyone. Much. Nice to see you too. Very happy to see all of you. How is life going? Absolutely amazing. Just came back from Sydney, a few days off, and going to Frankfurt uh, the 1st of July, which is like Monday. And I'm Thanks. really happy about it. Wonderful. Must be exciting for you. Huh? Oh, amazing. Amazing spirit. The best company. It's just great. It's just great. All right. A quick question for you. Tom. I believe there are quite few speeds in aviation mm -hmm. and it might be confusing so for some of us student pilots or af geeks or even pilots so could you please talk to us through all the speeds what do we mean which one do we use more often stuff like that oh <laughs> nah, we need a book for this it's yeah it's huge uh, it's a huge subject definitely there are many speeds um, i'll tell you to start with a basic speed is the indicated airspeed so IAS, the indicated airspeed is the reference speed. Uh, it's basically uh, the dynamic pressure of the wind air flowing the aircraft from above and beneath. So this is the indicated airspeed. Tom. Right. And where does this indication come from? So the indication comes from pitot tubes uh, and static ports that are outside of the aircraft. And uh, perhaps we can put it now, just to show them that was during a, a walk around. And if Karim, you agree, maybe we can work this video on. Wonderful. To, to put a walk around and what we check. Absolutely. So those are uh, the uh, receptor that uh, provide us in the aircraft with some information needed, such as the speeds. Okay, and um, what do we use this speed for? I mean, the indicated speed, what is it used for? Okay, the indicated, air, the indicated air speed is used as a reference to get other speeds. So from this speed, we can, by applying certain corrections, get other speeds. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's, what other speeds can we get or can we derive from the indicated air speed? So, uh, okay, so from the uh, IAS, the first speed that we can get is the calibrated air speed. And to get from here to there, we apply a correction on the instruments. And you're a student pilot, Karim, you should know. The instruments so, and the... Position error? Position errors, in fact. So um, we, we apply a correction and from the IAS, we obtain the uh, calibrated airspeed. Now from the calibrated airspeed, we obtain also the... Equivalent airspeed? Equivalent airspeed by correcting E compressibility? Compressibility, in fact. This is it. Now, from the EAS, we get the TAS, the true airspeed, by applying a correction on the density. Now, from the TAS, we can get a very important speed by... Applying wind correction, I think? Absolutely. So, plus or minus wind, we get... Ground speed. The ground speed. It's pretty tough work to apply all these corrections in in the air, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, how do all these corrections are made? Of course, flying from uh, Paris to London, for example, we are not going to calculate this. So we've got a very advanced aircraft, and uh, the aircraft is able to provide us with uh, those different speeds. Um, in fact, the if, if, if you want to dig into the system, it's just just I'll give you a few few hints. So. The props we spoke about, the static, the pitots, are parts of a system called ADIRS, Air Data Inertia Reference System. So this system in the 380, I'm not sure about the other aircraft, but in the 380 has three units called ADRU, so Air Data Inertia uh, Reference Units. Basically it's computers that have two components each. The components are ADR, that provide cer certain information that you can see right now, and the IR, that provide other uh, information. So one of the important speeds that we have, uh, Karim, we haven't spoken about it, is ground speed. The ground speed gets you the flight time, gets you, for example, the ETPs, and we showed you a video about this. I filmed uh, a few uh, way of creating ETPs in the aircraft, calculating it, that, that would be very, very interesting to... You mean the equal time points? Absolutely, the equal time points between, uh, for example, departure, arrival, or uh, between two airports, 
that we use because we work a lot, especially on the Airbus A380. We work a lot during cruise compared to other aircraft. Yes, as we cannot, we cannot go everywhere, so we have to make sure to plan the flight. But one of the most important thing you haven't spoken to me about, Karim, that we use over a certain altitude, um, which is the... Mach number. Mach number, absolutely. Mach number is essential. It is basically the ratio of our speed compared to the speed of... Sound. Sound, indeed. So that's very, very important reference. Okay, and uh, how do we get this Mach number? <laughs> the, the Mach number. Okay, we have a speed Mach button that we press. <laughs> 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 That's one way. <laughs> uh, we fly Airbus. <laughs> now we, we, of course, we don't calculate it during the flight, but... Um, Show us the calculation, please. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, so we, we don't do this, huh, of course, because we, the, 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 the aircraft provides the information. But anyway, so this is how we get it. Look, Mach number... Excuse my writing, guys. Eh? Mach number is equal to the TAS, so true airspeed, divided by... A, which is the local speed of sound. Okay. A is equal in notes to 39 Racine, uh, I was going to say it in French, we say Racine Carré, a square root of temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. If you want, uh, during my last flight from uh, Sydney to Doha, I filmed a few videos just to show and prepare uh, the next upcoming videos. So I've got uh, information from it if you want. Look, we've got at that moment where I was filming uh, a task of 482 knots. Okay, that was our task. Uh, we've got a sat temperature of minus 51. And although it's not important, but we can uh, talk about it quickly. We've got uh, an ice minus deviation of plus, minus one. Indeed, minus one. Oh, you saw the video, of course. <laughs> okay, so uh, we said it's TAS divided by all this. So the Mach number is equal to our TAS, which is 482 divided by 39 times square root of negative 51, negative 51 plus 273. 273. So now 482 divided by 39 square root of minus 51. So 273 minus 51 is... 2, 2, 2. Okay, and 482 divided by 39, the square root of uh, 2, 2, 2 is uh, 5, 8, 1. one. Of course, I've calculated this before. Huh? <laughs> and um, we obtain a Mach number which is equal to 0 0.838 approximately, which makes it, we round it up, Mach 8, 4. So why zero? Zero simply because we fly below Mach 1, which is the speed of sound, correct? We don't fly at speed of sound or Mach 2, like um, the Concorde, for example. We used to fly Mach 2, 2.5, I think, if I just by memory. Uh, so uh, yeah, we fly below and it's always zero point something. That's below the speed of sound. This is awesome. But I have a question for you guys before you leave, which is very important. And please try to think of it for upcoming videos. Why do we fly Mach number and we don't fly TAS above a certain altitude? Very interesting. <laughs> and now, Karim, let's oh. play some FIFA. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you soon. Cheers.